If you enjoy Our Sinclair and want to support the show, please visit our page at patreon.com slash Our Sinclair. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Our Sinclair. I'm John. And I'm Aaron. And today we're going to be talking about Lords of Chaos. Oh, boy. Let me ask you a DD and d question. Please. Aaron. When you choose your character, mm-hmm. Where do you fall on the chaos spectrum? Are you chaotic neutral? Chaotic neutral is actually my favorite alignment. I figured. I really do. I I, I, I like chaotic good. Because you can do whatever you want when you're chaotic neutral. Well, you've got to be careful, okay? Because And also, I like true neutral. But true neutral is a, is a tough bag because you have to act neutral. Right. You know? Depends if your DM's going to run and force these things. Especially, it makes a lot of sense for your cleric or, or playing the religious side of your character. But I like chaotic neutral. Or I, now chaotic good, I can tolerate. Chaotic neutral is more fun because I like to do some stuff that's occasionally quite evil, but not super evil. Mm-hmm. But like, will I screw over one of my party members? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Will I shove uh, the cleric in front of the dragon while I'm high town out the door? You betcha. Why do you think that D and D even includes what? What is the what? What do you call this even category? Deportment. Why do that? Why does it include a uh, that the the various alignments? Alignment. Yeah, yeah. Why? Why do you even think they put that in there? Well, it's a guideline to, for the religious purposes in the game. Uh, so there's that. Uh, the, some things, some magic items or spells or whatnot are based on your on your alignment. You could almost get rid of it if your players are going to be playing their characters the way they should. But it's a guideline to keep people honest, I guess. Also, it tells people you don't normally reveal your alignment to your buddies, you know. Because and really, no one walks up. I don't walk up to you, boat, and say like, "Hey, boat, I'm chaotic good. How about you?" Because that people be like, "What the hell?" Right. But you could glean that from the way I do things, you know. So, so you're not supposed to reveal your alignment. It's well, not I mean, public knowledge. You don't have to. We never, de- I never ever tell anybody my alignment. Right, which leads me to again, why have it at all? What, because it's a good guideline, especially for you know. Like I said, it, it, there are reasons, there are rule reasons to do it. Now, here's my question: If you were to pick an alignment for yourself in real life, what would it be? Oh, definitely chaotic neutral. You. I mean, I, do is it? Are you asking me what I am in real life in or real what life. I would like to be? No, what are you in real life? Oh, I'm definitely chaotic neutral. You don't think you're a good alignment? No. You're very religious and you're very nice. No. Okay. I mean, I don't think I'm very nice. You're pretty. I, nice. I don't think I'm particularly religious. Um, not as religious as I'd like to. Didn't be. Didn't you work for the church for like a billion years? Yeah, but I That's mean, that's religious, pal. Um, I I have the capacity to do good. But when given the choice, much of the time I choose the wrong rather than the good that I should do. Mm. So I would like to be paladin when, in fact, I am scoundrel. <laughs> it's funny. I, so your alignment would be more evil than my alignment because I was always I always consider myself sort of chaotic good or a law or neutral good. You are definitely a chaotic good guy. Yeah, I, I can live with that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, what about? Where do you stand on games that allow you to choose, um, you know, whether you want to be like, for example, like Mass Effect, where you you can choose to be good, a good guy, or choose to be a bad guy. I like them. Uh, well, I played Star Wars uh, Galaxies. Is that what it is? The online one. Is that the one where you get all kinds of scars and stuff? The worse you are, or you I become think so. like Darth Maul. I don't know. It's not the. It was not the one that got canceled. It's the next one, okay. whatever that was. And you could pick the light side of the dark side. Uh, I almost always play characters that aren't super evil because I I feel bad when mm-hmm. I do super evil stuff. I mean, sometimes you want to gut a sucker. It's funny because I can What play, about Walker? I can play Carmageddon or Walker and just mm-hmm. mow down fields of people and just be like, whoa! Mm-hmm. But if there's a storyline with a cinematic involved and you're gutting a kid or right. something, I can't do it. I can't you know what I wish? I wish that they would make a game instead of letting you choose whether you want to be good or want to be bad because those choices, at least in my experience, are always so black and white. It's like punch the kid or hug the kid. Yeah. I wish that they just make a game straight up where you're just the bad guy. Well, you know, it's because they could write a better story that way. 
It, they, and they can shade they it. Made games like you know, that. like Tie Fighter or something yeah. like that. That's right. That's, that's yeah. why we played a couple weeks ago on ARG. We did a game called uh, uh, Gabriel Knight Two oh. sends the uh, no, it was Gabriel Knight Two sends the father, and it was a. I think I mentioned on here it's a it's a f- game that was based on live film, mm-hmm. and the characters in it were Gabriel Knight, and you had Grace. You played them both, you alternating in chapters. And in the first two chapters of each character, they were both absolute jerks. Grace, in particular, was the most... Brent hated the game because of that. Right. Her, in some ways, it was amusing to be the jerk character. Like, Grace comes in like a house of fire. She's bad-mouthing everybody. She's throwing fits and raising hell. And Gabriel Knight's real twisty and sneaky. He screws people over that were trying to help him. Is his name actually Gabriel Knight? That's right. Like, first name Gabriel, last name Knight. That's right. Yeah. Why? It's related to Chuck Knight. Bobby Knight. Bobby Knight. That's it. I don't know who Chuck Knight is. I don't know either. That's a much it's, less cool sounding name. Just thinking of Chuck but anyway, so it was it was pretty fun to play someone who was I mean, it's weird to be in the mold where you're playing a sneaky jerk. I kinda liked it, you know. Yeah. I like games where you have to play on the bad side and you have to do stuff. Like you're like okay. For example, um, remember that game that was real popular, that indie game, Passport Please. Do you remember that? I've heard of it. Okay. I'm not playing that. Where it's like you have to make all these really tough decisions about whether you let people in or not, and yeah. all that stuff. Like you're not actually doing evil stuff. Like you're not gutting a kid, but it's making you make choices that you you know it forces you to make these these you know less than ideal choices. I wish there were more games like. It's that. a good thing about computer games and role playing. Like you can explore parts of your own personality. Sure. That you normally would net would be untouched. Yeah. So just wait till our next role playing cathartic. game. I've got a character. It's oh be, god. It's hey, be... I'm not running it, so go go crazy, <laughs> pal. Well, let's talk about this game, Lords of Chaos. Now, you know, uh before we get into this, you know, uh I love I love the Spectrum. Mm-hmm. And one of the reasons I love it so much is because it introduced me to one of my favorite games and a game that me and my son have bonded over, which was Chaos. That's a great game. It's such a great game. And we play it on we play it emulated. We play it on my phone. And so when I found out we were doing this, we were both very excited, me and my son. And so I, we were so excited that I went and printed out, I found the manual and printed out the manual right here. Because I've been using it. Because in Euro, you need the manual for this thing. Um, and, of course, you the, the same people were sort of responsible for this one. We should go into this. Uh, this, again, of course, is Lords of Chaos, uh, released in 1990, uh, boat. And uh, published by Blade Software. Uh, the fellows that put this together were out of an g- outfit called Target Games Limited. Uh, they were responsible for uh, Laser Squad, uh, Lords of Chaos, uh, a couple other games. Uh, the fellow that did this was a guy named Julian Gollop. Uh, he was responsible for those games, plus Battle Cars, of course, Chaos, the original, Nebula, and uh, a few other games. Well, you can't forget um, the, the the big game that he's famous for. Yeah. Didn't he do Chaos. XCOM? Not on the Sinclair. Oh, okay. <laughs> but and listen, but he, he was the he, guy behind he, XCOM, right? He, I'm not crazy, right? No, he peaked with chaos, as far as I'm concerned. And I think this is his brother Nick, who also worked on this, and a, a fellow named Sean G. McClure, which I think he did. I'm pretty sure he did the load screen picture on this, which is it's just nice. Uh, this was out for the 48K uh, and is four players, uh, which is uh, a couple shorter than the... Uh, the original, I believe you could play eight up to eight on Chaos. I believe it was at least six. Um, this originally sold for a ten pound, and if you wanted the disc version, which is the one I played, mm-hmm. I might add, it was a fifteen pound. I played pound. the cassette version. Well, I did. I just played. I just played the uh, the, uh, the the one that, that had the disc. You know, it doesn't matter. I played on the emulator. So, getting back to Chaos, if you, re- if you remember when we looked at that, that's been about a couple months ago, I guess. Uh, Chaos was a, a very basic game in some ways, but a very advanced game in others. You play a wizard, you're trying to kill other wizards, depending on how many of your people you're playing. You could have one or you could have, you know, six. So it, it's a ton of wizards. And your goal is to go out and murder them with your spells. And you would summon creatures and you would try to do whatever you could to trap them or whatever and kill them. 
it's a it's a basic game, but it was a, it was a pretty advanced level of strategy to try to figure out what to do, which characters you should pick. Another aspect of it I liked is you could you could summon stuff without having the power to summon it. It's just an illusion. The other characters could try to detect whether you're lying or not effectively. It was a great game, simple but brilliant. Yeah, it's a one sort of you know there's there's no scrolling. You're, it's it's like a chessboard. That's right. Now and we've also played the the, the updated version that's on Steam. Which it's fun too, and, it, and what they did with that, it's sort of now that I've played this, it's sort of a hybrid of these two games. Okay, which I'll get to that later. So this game comes around, and I have to admit, when it, when I loaded it up, I just sat there because I was. That's one of the reasons I had to print the book because when this thing when it loads up, it doesn't really start you off at a game. It starts you off at a screen where you could load stuff, uh, and. Uh, I didn't know what to do. And so, luckily, you had already done your playthrough, and I went and watched you do it. But you basically have to type in, you have to load a scenario, or you can create a wizard, yeah. or you can create a scenario. And again, you know, I if I hadn't had the manual, I would have been totally lost, because the game gives you no prompts to, to what to do. Oh, you know? yeah, yeah. You've got to have the manual. Uh, uh, and again, it's a, it's a pretty beefy manual mm-hmm. for, for, for a, 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 a Especially ZX when you game. print it out at 25-point font. As that's, hey, that's the way the PDF was, pal. Mm-hmm. I didn't have to do with that. So, what you end up having to do is you have to load. You can load one of the three scenarios that come with it. Uh, you can also make yourself a wizard. Now, I, at first, I didn't do this. Did you ever do it? I was unable to. The game. I think it might have been because I was playing the cassette version or something, but I couldn't get any of my custom wizards to load. Uh-huh. So, so I, I had to go with rando wizard. Well, custom wizards it, it are no great shakes. Okay, what you? I mean, in the other game, you could pick a, the kind of your icon. You mm-hmm. can pick the color mm-hmm. and. That's pretty much the extent of the. Then this one, you, and then you can pick your name. And this one, you can pick your name. You can pick uh, your uh, spells to a certain degree. And then you and you. But there's not much to it. I did not. I will admit, I did not even attempt to screw with the scenario editor. I. I was not going to go down no, that road. I no. was like, it was crazy. So you load one, two, or three to load up one of these scenarios. Uh, just a brief, because we've got to go into this plot a little bit. Did you read the plot for this? I'm not going to read this whole uh, No, I, I will be the first to admit that I scrolled rapidly down through uh, the plot section. This is sort of important, so I'll just give it a quick read. Okay. So, in this world, you've got a bunch of mages. Okay. And everything was cool. But then something weird happened, and mana, which is what you use to cast your spells, the the energy that surrounds us all, like the force, mm-hmm. that you just, it, started, it started ramping up. Mm. And it got... And so it was too much. It was causing weird stuff to happen. It was co- it was causing uh, weird monsters to come out and swamps to form and wars to happen. Oh my gosh! And so much mana built up <clears throat> that it literally blew the world apart. Okay. Now the main wait a minute, is, wait a minute. It blew the world apart. Oh yeah, I'm getting to it. Okay. So. Uh, I mean, literally, there were it caused violent earthquakes and stuff, and so much pressure happened. The world shattered, and this is a quote, and split into many fragments, which rapidly formed into self-contained worlds. Okay, now okay. The, the wizards in this game suspected that the reason this happened was because there was energy flowing flowing through these portals. Okay, so uh, the, it's like oblivion. I don't. Well, I you know I played oblivion, but I didn't pay attention to mm. the plot. So when this happened. The wizards were the only ones left, and they kept these little fragments together with all that because they had a bunch of mana, and they basically. What, is, what does mana look like? Mana. How does it manifest itself? There it is. It's just it's just an unseen energy. I don't okay. know. Okay. How, how did the Do wizards? Do I look like have... Merlin? Am I am I dressed like Woody? I don't know what the heck's going on. I wish on. you were. I've got I, a Halloween too. costume you, in mind for you. You've got one of those hats. Yeah, don't I you? do. So you should have worn that. So at this point, the wizards are like, well. The world blew up. We we're, we all own these little fragments. Screw it. Let's fight. Let's fight. Because we're gonna someone's gonna take all the mana. Mm-hmm. You know that's basically what they wanted to do. And so and also they're gonna mess with these portals. These portals can uh, apparently move you back and forth through time and space. Okay. All right. And that's where all this. And so that's basically the background of this game. So long story short, you could cut all that out. You're a wizard. See that other wizard? You don't like him? Go give him the wizard business. That's right. And so you're at it. Now, several aspects of this game are chaos like. And I will admit, it's taken me a good while to come to grips with what I know now. Because I put a lot of time in this. My kid and me sat down and played it uh, 
two or three times, and he doesn't like it. He gave up on it, so he would they stopped playing with me on this one, and so I had I was had to go out on my own. So uh, you start out in your wizard house, and depend of course you pick how many wizards you want to play. Let's just say you pick pick two, and you're in your wizard house, and presumably the guy you're fighting is somewhere out there in his wizard house, and as, as if you're in this sort of a uh, uh, graphical world that looks it reminded me of the and I think someone even said this and I thought they got a dead one it reminded me sort of a more colorful version of the old old Ultimas oh yeah not yeah. even that old I mean even Ultima Ultima 4 still looked like this right but you know yeah. what I mean oh yeah right? absolutely is that, what, is that what you got yeah. at yeah yeah and so you move and it's all in grids and mm -hmm. you and you can and you've got your wizard there so the only thing you don't have is the guys marking time you yeah, know? yeah these guys don't move yeah. and so What's your the object of the game? Just to boil it down, is to find the other wizard and kill them. Mm -hmm. Okay, now there are three active participants in play. In, a, in if you're playing with just two wizards, it's you, the other wizard, and inhabitants of this world. Mon ran these monsters that come out, random monsters. If if you die from the other wizard, you lose. If you get killed by a random monster, you lose. If you kill the other wizard, you win. That's all there is to it. And the random monsters uh, act independently of, of uh, on their own. Mm -hmm. They've got their own turn. You don't know what they're doing. Uh, this is a turn-based game. Uh, you start off by uh, you can move. You can uh, you can then you can summon creatures. Uh, this game, unlike uh, uh, the original Chaos, uh, well, there are many things different. For one thing, it's a huge scrolling world as opposed to one big block. Another thing that's different is you can pick up items, and you need to pick them up because certain spells will require you to retrieve spell components and then take all the stuff and put it in a pot, mm -hmm. mix that stuff up. Also, certain creatures that you have to summon, you have to summon them with certain types of points that you have to manufacture, like dragons. So you have to take that stuff and put it in the pot, mix it up, uh, and and so there's and you don't just cast whatever you want. You can't go right. crazy. Um, you have a limited amount of movement, uh, a limited amount of mana, yeah. a limited amount of And this is, this is really where you see the, uh, the roots of UFO Enemy Unknown starting to come to fruition. Yeah. Because the whole, your, your action points, your movement points, all these things uh, Julian would further develop in his later games. Yeah, now, tell me what you, your initial experience is playing this. Um, I'm assuming that video was you playing it for the first time, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, I could immediately tell that I wasn't going to like it um, <laughs> because to me a strategy game is best played when you can see all the pieces at once you know I have a hard time um, trying to wrap my head around stuff happening off screen and preparing myself for that plus the fact that you've got to move all your guys around plus I mean there are, there are too many components in this game to make this game fun for me like for example, if you started out having a set amount of monsters that you just were controlling, and it becomes like um, like UFO or something like Final Fantasy Tactics, you know any of the Tactics Ogre games, things like that, you know, okay, that's your game right there. In this game, not only do you have to manage all that, but you also have to manage all your spells, you have to manage crafting components, you have to manage picking up items, you have to negotiate this world. Um, and it became overwhelming almost immediately for me. It is an old game, and so bearing that in mind, there are certain... If this game was just you run around and go and try to kill the other wizard, even if it's turn-based, I could be down with that. Mm -hmm. What makes this game difficult, and Chaos had this same problem, but it was, such a, it, was a, it was a smaller game, and it was less of an issue. This game requires you to do a lot of... Um, a lot of menu writing, you know. Uh, you are yeah. You're constantly you're constantly uh, going off. You're leaving the 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 uh, you're leaving the action. And now, luckily, you don't actually the the way that the the board is set up. And we didn't really mention this is that the screen is set up to where about a th two thirds of the screen is the map, and then a third of the screen on the right is your item, your inventory, and all of your menu commands. Right. The menu commands are very. <laughs> 
goofy. Yeah, they're goofy. For example, if you want to move your character, you'd think that right at the top, one of the commands would just be move, but it's not. You have to select your character, you have to go into another menu. It's like three menus down to move. And then you don't actually move your character with the stick or with the thing. You actually have to point in the, even though your character can only move one block at a time, you still have to select that block and your character moves the block. Yeah, there are, there are several parts of this game that are overly taxing for no good reason. Yeah. I'll give you an yeah. example. You want to open a door. That should just happen. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't have to go up to it and do anything. Right. Uh, and this, you have to walk up to the door. Then you have to hit the use button. Then you have to move the use arrow to the door. Mm -hmm. Then you have to click on the door to open the door. Then you have to go back to your movement and then you move through the door. Uh, that's too much. Yeah. Too much, too many commands. This thing is not a game. I sit down and I'll watch some of your playthrough. And I sat down, I'm like, well, heck, I was I play Chaos all the time. And it can't, playing Chaos helps, by the way. Sure. Just because just you have a general idea of what's going on. But you sit down to play this, and you're, uh, it's it's crazy. You've got uh, commands, like you've got a, a G summon, mm -hmm. an A summon. Well, you, until you, if, you, if you don't know that those are ground and air, you've got no idea what's going on. Uh, you've, got, uh, you've got a ton of spells you can go through, but you can't cast them all. You don't understand why you can't cast some. And like again, you this is one game you got to read the manual, read the heck out of it uh, to get an idea of what's going on. Um, now, I'm not here to bury this game. In fact, I'm, to some extent, I'm here to praise it to a certain degree. They tried to go into a different area here, and what they tried to do was take the basic fundamentals of chaos, implement them on a scrolling large world map in a role-playing um, way. And, and and what I mean by that is, uh, once you make your wizard and you you assign him points, what you do do that. You assign you have a certain amount of points you can assign to his various abilities, defense, uh, mana, you know stuff like that. You've got uh, uh, stamina, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and once you make him and you play through the scenarios. You will level up. You get experience points. Did you even know that? I don't know if you even knew yeah. that. Yeah, and the way that you the way that you <clears throat> you have to do this is real funky because you you actually have to you have to save the game, quit the game, and then restart the game. And when you restart yeah. the game, you'll be a level. Which up. I had to get I had to read the docs for that yeah. too. I yeah. was like, man, this is crazy. And so you but you you advance your character, uh, so he'll be better the next time you play. Yeah. So what they were trying to do here was expand that into something more what more like exactly a UFO mm -hmm. which is that has a it's more role playing mm -hmm. than this um, this shipped with three scenarios okay which is i think probably way too few but but you know not played the advanced scenarios i don't know how in depth they are but that didn't seem like very many so again we we mentioned that this game was based around the idea that portals had caused less mana to come out so the three uh the three scenarios are called portal arrives and that's that's the turn where a portal comes then there's one called portal remains and then the last one uh is treasure and these are one two and three now uh they released some uh, they released an expansion for this thing i think i've got it stuck in here and it i think it added a couple more uh yeah here are the scenarios their, their formal names you've got uh, scenario one, the many colored land. Scenario two, Slayer's Dungeon, and, sla and scenario three, Rag Ragarill's Domain. That's a tough one to say. And there was an expansion. I don't know if I got the name of the expansion, but uh, uh, it added a couple more levels. And did you try the expansion? I no, I didn't. I, I saw it on the Tosec, but I didn't. I didn't try it out. Okay, yeah, the, the expansion adds two uh, further. Uh, scenarios: Islands of Iris and Tombs of the Undead. Okay. And one of one of those is a, only a single player. It would be kind of a disappointment if it was just Tombs of the Dead. There yeah. wouldn't be too much to do. <laughs> tombs of the Dead, just walk around and you put flowers down. <laughs> you know, I would love to give a detailed um, interpretation of how I thought the rules flowed and the balancing and stuff, but I can't. Uh, I didn't. I. It took me a long time to even come close to thinking I had any sort of grasp. I'll be honest with you, and it's going to require me to play more to tell you. I mean, I'm assuming it's probably since I played the first one so much. This guy has a good way of doing a pretty yeah, balanced. Yeah. Well, game. here's the thing. This game came out in 1990. Yeah. This is a very, very primitive game to have been released in 1990. 
Um, it's uh, it's almost as if this game could have come out in 1985. I mean, uh, I realize that we're we're still dealing with the spectrum here, um, and and maybe I know this game got an Amiga port. Maybe the Amiga port is different, but things like hit points, you know, like I would like when I'm doing battle with an enemy, I would like to know. How, what how effective my creatures are against this particular enemy. So when I go to fight another enemy, maybe I'll cast a different spell. Well, that's the way chaos was too, though. It did, well, yeah, but chaos the dark. again. Chaos came out in 1984. Well, you know, it was a different time. It is amazing that this was so many years later. And this game is trying to be a role playing game. This game is not trying to be. Chaos is like a board game. You and know. really, this isn't really much of a role-playing game. No, they well, added some stuff to it, but I mean, it, it's they trying to be that way, though. I mean, this is the, I can like ultimate with, role-playing with, game. with the items, you know, with the items yeah. and the leveling and the large, expansive world. I mean, they're trying to go in that but, direction. I mean, the, the NPCs, the you know, the the actual, the flesh, the actual soul of the world isn't there. Oh, I'm not saying it's good. I'm just I'm saying. Just saying that it, it's, but I mean, I, they were going that direction, and like you said, sort of an evolution, uh, up 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 the pike there. Uh, this did get. Uh, you mentioned that the ports that this thing had. I was actually surprised uh, to hear what all this came out on. So, you've got an Amstrad version, and you've got an Atari ST version, and a C64 version, and an Amiga version, and they planned a PC version uh, of this as well. So, you know, it's kind of neat. Now, get this uh, boaster. I, th I read this, and I thought this was kind of kind of funny. Um, the prices for the different versions. I, I hate to dwell on this, but it amused me. So, the 8-bit versions uh, that were released in 90, uh, they were priced, the, the Spectrum tape, the Spectrum C64 and Amstrad tape, 10 pound. Okay. You're in. Okay. If you want the, uh, uh, if you want the, the uh, Atari disc, all right, 20 pound. Okay. And if you want the Amiga disc, you're in for 25 pound. That's, that, that seems that seems expensive. It seems very expensive. You know, uh, for, for that now, so who knows though? Maybe the Amiga version is like it's like uh, you know virtual reality, like everything's polygonal and awesome. And, and the disc version, this was fifteen pounds for the for the Spectrum. Mm -hmm. So you know that's pretty expensive, I think. Yeah, for a Spectrum game. I mean, I don't know what the normal disc prices were for Spectrum. Yeah, I uh, yeah, I'm the same way. Now, so we've. I'm the, I don't hate this game. I think there's some. I think there's something here. But if you're gonna twist my arm, chaos is gives me all the stuff that this game gives me, but in a simpler way. And both of them modernized are a good idea. If you if you clean this up with some modern menuing and stuff, you probably got something. Mm -hmm. Maybe. 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 Um, it makes me now want to play XCOM, and I never ever thought I'd say that. So maybe I'll, maybe now I can get into it and stuff like these. Um, so the reception on these games, now this might have surprised you, Boat. Uh, it surprised me. Your Sinclair in 1990 uh, gave this a 90 percent. Crash gave it an 80 percent, and this game won the award for best adventure game of the year in Crash. That's and that was with an 80 percent. So it was either a bad year for adventure games, or the readers liked it a lot more than the editors did. Mm -hmm. And this was also voted 21st best, uh, 21st best Sinclair game of all time in the top 100 uh, Your Sinclair Reader poll. Wow. So, <laughs> that's pretty good. High praise indeed. Uh, I should also mention that the World of Spectrum uh, gave this an 8.36 with 300 plus votes. Yeah, so it's so well liked. It's well it's liked. Well -liked. And I'm not saying I don't like it, I just need more time. Oh, I should also mention, I found this on eBay. Uh, you can get it for eleven bucks. Okay. That's the disc. One disc, eleven bucks. So, hey, the disc held its value pretty good. <laughs> that's true. That's true. <laughs> well, uh, you weren't the only one that didn't have a, a lot of time with this game this week because we got no Discord reviews. Oh, I had a lot of time with it. I just didn't have a, a lot of success. Well, that's the difference. Uh, we had no no Discord reviews. That's the Nobody first time that's probably to, ever happened. Yeah, no one wanted to to tackle the Lords of it's, Chaos. It's intimidating the way it starts. Mm -hmm. That's that we've talked about bad menu systems. Yeah. This one comes up, it's like, good luck. Mm -hmm. Like could they not at least give you a hint as to what you need to type in there without right. the instructions? Right. You know, at that Whatever happened to just press start, you know. 
Hey. That's that's what that's all you need. I I don't know what to tell you on that one. Well, Aaron, I do tell you. I will tell you this. Our Sinclair is recorded live every Friday night, except when it's not. Next week we won't be live. Next week, for example, it um, always amuses me when you say yeah. that. Um, and you're free to join us in the uh, in the YouTube chat, just like the Car 2005, Pixels at Dawn, Edvin Helland, uh, Necronom, Freebies Sierra. Ooh, and uh, free exotic. lunch. So uh, thank you guys for uh, joining us. You can shout out what you think of us, and you can also tell us when we're wrong about the game. That's Although right. We've been lucky. I think so far this week we're okay. Yeah. Um, I do also want to thank our uh, Patreon supporters. Uh, you can support the show at patreon.com slash our Sinclair. I want to <laughs> thank Laurent Giroux, Gary Heather, Eric Nelson, Harbo Not Graham W. Vebke, Frodo NL, Tapes from the Crypt, Pixels of Dawn, Chris Folds, Paul Harrington, and Christopher Hassel. Thank Ooh, you so much. Ever expanding. For supporting the show, absolutely. Next week, Aaron, we're going back to the races. Oh, boy. Miami Cobra GT. Oh, yes. Yeah, think about that. I all love everything those, in that. All three of those words make you think of fast cars. That's Miami, right. Cobra, and GT. I love it. Yeah. I love that. All right, well, until then, keep on playing that specky. Rewind tape and press play.